I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is the TS-100, and it is almost the best soldering iron a hobbyist can have, period. In fact, the only thing I don't like about it is that because it's so portable, the ergonomics aren't perfect for using on the bench. And that's why on the bench I still use my good old Hakko 888D. But if I had to pick one soldering iron to travel with, this would be it. This is a fantastic soldering iron. And not just a fantastic travel iron, but just a great iron all around. If you want to check out my review of the TS100 and the TS80, there's a link down in the video description. But don't go, because what we're doing with the TS100 today, it's not a review. No, we're going to... Here's the problem with the TS100. It's so popular that everyone has one. And you go to an event like Quad Camp or you go to a race or a, a flight day and at any given work table, there's a million of them sit Not a million. There's a bunch of them sitting around and I'm always worried I'm going to lose mine. So there's two things you can do to personalize your TS100. Well, I mean, you could just take like and put, put some marker on it, right? Oh, it's a fun nail polish. What's the fun in that? No. One of the things we're going to do today is we are going to put on... Oh! A custom colored shell so that mine will stand out because it's orange and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to put the custom firmware on it that has some advantages if you haven't done that you got to do it the custom i mean it's good on the standard firmware but the custom firmware lets it go up to 450 degrees celsius instead of 400. Now, i confess i have not practiced this or researched this at all no you're just going to ride along with me as we sit down and figure out how this goes but the good news is that it comes with some instructions. So I'm I'm reasonably smart. I should be able to figure this out, shouldn't I? Okay. You need a 1.5 millimeter driver. Gosh, wherever will I get one of those? <laughs> and a T4 and T3. Ooh. Torx. Oh, I don't know about. That's a tougher one. Well, see, here's my lack of research showing me up already. I'll be right back. And we're back. And thanks to the wonders of Amazon Prime, I now have the micro toolkit that I need to take the TS-100 apart. I did not realize that a Torx T4 bit was not ever going to be something that you would have in a typical household tool set. So we remove these screws, as you saw before. Uh, the kit does nicely come with spares of these screws, uh, if you lose them or anything. This is the part where we use the T4 Torx driver from my new tool kit. Some of you are wondering why I didn't order one of those multi-kits that basically comes with one driver and a bunch of interchangeable bits. Yes, those are good value for money if you, you get, you know, 64 different drivers for the price of, well, two maybe. I always prefer individual drivers. I hate having to switch bits out in the middle of a job. I want to just pick up a second driver and go. So I, I, that's why I went with this kit instead of one of the other ones you might be thinking of. Okay. We'll pull right here and pull this off. And that's going to come off. That's how the uh, heating element is driven. Very clever. Nice and secure. Yeah, I really don't think you need this this screw if you don't want to if you want to easily swap them. That's really slick. The stages of grief model describes people's response to traumatic, stressful situations, such as discovering that after waiting two days for a toolkit to come in the mail so you could finish making a video, the toolkit that you ordered did not come with all of the driver sizes that you needed. Let's watch. As Joshua goes through the stages of grief and see if you can identify which one he's experiencing at any given moment. Does it not come with a T3? Are you, are you kidding me? I'm so, I'm, s are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? idiot I'm such an idiot for real for real for real for real oh for oh how does it not have a freaking t3 
No. Are you kidding me? Please. One of you guys freaking go in here. Oh, uh, no, uh, no. Come on. Shit. 0 0.8 by 4 millimeters. I don't know what that means, but... Oh, my God. How is it possible? How is it possible that I've done this? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Come on, just anything. Just I'll use a flathead. Just get it. In. Oh. T6. Oh, T6. No. Oh my god. Are you serious? Are you serious? How is it possible? How is it possible? <laughs> I'll be back in two days. <laughs> While we're waiting for the bits to come in the mail, let's go ahead and update the firmware on the TS-100. And if you have a TS-100, I, I cannot recommend this firmware enough. It is... Uh, in my opinion, a mandatory upgrade. The TS-100 is, okay, maybe mandatory is too strong. The TS-100 is great from the factory, but one of the things I didn't like about it was it only goes up to 400 Celsius, and I sometimes like to solder a little higher at like 450. It's especially useful if you're doing big wires and don't have a great big honking thick tip. Mm. Uh, anyway, it has other advanced features like the ability to change some of the settings from the menu on the iron instead of having to go into the USB drive. Anyway, it's great. You should totally do it. And it couldn't be easier. Here's how. Go to this URL, which is down in the video description. Go to the releases page, and you're going to find the the hex file that corresponds to your language. So for example, I am English speaker. I'm going to get ts100en.hex, and I'm going to download that file. Then I'm not going to show you this part because I only have one camera right this minute, but you're going to hold down the button on the TS-100 that is closest to the tip of the iron, and while holding down the button, you're going to plug in USB. And you should see the menu, the screen on the TS-100 will say DFU 3.43 or some other. You should see a window pop up, which is this little um, remote drive, okay? You're going to take that hex file that you downloaded, here it is. You can see this is not the first time I've done this. Uh -huh. uh, you're going to take that hex file that you downloaded and you're going to drag it to the USB drive that appeared when you plugged in the, uh, the TS-100. And when you do that, it's going to disconnect and it's going to reconnect and it's going to be renamed. Did you see that real quick? It's going to rename the file as instead of .hex, it's going to be renamed as .rdy. When that happens, it means the upgrade has been successful. And it's a little confusing because as soon as it finishes upgrading, it disconnects and goes away. And, and you go back, and you're like, oh, wait, no, here it is. Here it is. Sorry, it popped up again. Okay. See how it says ts100.en underscore en dot rdy, whereas it used to say dot hex. That means the upgrade was complete. That's all there is to it. As soon as it sees you drop the file in there, it upgrades the firmware. And now if you unplug and power cycle, you should have a whole bunch of new functions and features and menus. And if you want to learn more about that, here's the video. This is by Ben Brown. He's, I think he's the developer of the Raylan firmware. He speaks as if he is, um, but it'll give you a brief overview of what's in the firmware. Or if you're you know, reasonably technical, you could just poke through the menus and figure out what it does. Alrighty, let's see if Joshua has got the tools he needs to finish installing the case. Let's try again. I'm not even mad this time. I'm just embarrassed. Yay. Good thing they give replacement screws with this set. There's the new shell.
the buttons just drop out. Insert the buttons. Okay. Now, this piece. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. That piece goes toward the front. Check the button function. And what I did, it was a little, you couldn't see, but I just hold on to this metal piece and used it to lower, used it kind of as a shelf to lower the circuit board in. Okay. Now, T3. Really? Are the new screws any better than the old ones? The, um, the two little grippy prongs are not identical. So... This one goes in the back. Yay! One down. Okay. Looks good. <laughs> Looks like it wants to go front first. No, I'm wrong. Does it want to go back first? Yeah, it wants to go back first. There's a lip on the back. So. Mm hmm. So the. This piece of metal, I think, has to go in front of this little. Yeah, otherwise it won't go flush. But this piece has to go in first, so does it? Yeah, I think it does. Oof, got it. Well, that was that was more complicated than I thought it was going to be when I first started. I I do confess. I do confess. The T4 Torx in the bottom. The shorter of the 1.5 millimeter, the M2s in the front. And the longer of the M2s in the rear. And the peel. Perfect. And there we go. Now it's back together. And I have... Oh, there's one more step. Oh, yeah. If you're really a purist, 
Let's install these little uh, stickers. Awesome. Well, thank God that's over. And I'm sorry I ever decided to do it, but now that it's over, I'm glad it's done. <laughs> that was a real hassle. Um, thank you guys for going along with me on the ride. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I guess I would say if you decide to do this yourself, make sure you have a T3 and a T4 bit before you start because... Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.